Hi everybody. Um, there was a request by some um, watchers on my YouTube channel to make some recordings on um, popular science books. And uh, I was reluctant to because I have probably a few hundred popular science books and it's hard to choose. And um, also, whereas I used to read a lot of popular science books, lately, probably the last five, ten years, I've only read very few of them. So um, a lot of these are going to be um, old classic books. Um, matter of fact, I'm going to start with the classic books. And, um, and then I'm going to go to um, different subjects areas like physics, mathematics, computers and engineering, public policy, nuclear weapons, and biology. And, um, you know, my main advice with popular books is, um, you know, a lot of times you choose good writers, choose good authors, you know. Obviously, there are a lot of classic popular books by people like Feynman, Weinberg, and physicists like Z and Wilczek. But also there are ones by like Dyson and New Yorker writers like Jeremy Bernstein. And, you know, of course, Roger Penrose and John Carroll. So there's an awful lot. And, you know, you just have to find somebody who you like and the style. There are some books which are very good to learn from. And then there are others which are just entertaining reads. Most of the ones I'm going to give you are entertaining reads every now and then there's one where you can actually learn a lot from them so with that said um let me start i'm going to start with some very classic old books but um no particular order but this is a classic book godel escher and bach and um it won a pulitzer prize and um you know it's all about um music art logic uh, Feynman diagrams it just it just has it all and um, I highly uh, recommend it as one of the best books I've ever read in my life and it will really open your eyes to um, I don't know why that's coming out like that but anyway um, so this is one book I definitely recommend everybody read um, and then another set of books Okay, I don't know what happened there. Another set of books that I read when I was, um, you know, basically 11, 12 years old that I recommend. There have been a lot of anthologies on mathematics since then. This was one of the classic ones, The World of Mathematics. It was four volumes, and it would start with pure mathematics and number theory and things like that, and then go into things like relativity and physics and then aesthetics and the mathematics of war and game theory. So he covers just about every um, every topic you can in uh, mathematics. So this was one a uh, classic anthology that I read a long time ago. I highly recommend. Okay, next classic book. I don't know why it's saying that. Okay, the next classic book, maybe I better get rid of that, otherwise it will say it every time. Okay, good. The uh, next classic book is uh, The Double Helix by um, the people who, one of the people who discovered DNA. And, um, you know, this was like a classic scientific, uh, not really a biography, but a story of how they discovered the double helix and it's you know another classic book um continuing i highly recommend the book it's been a long time since this came out by james gleek on chaos this is a really fun read even if you know stuff about chaos theory and nonlinear systems and when i first read this this was all new but this is a great read. James Gleek is a great author. So, I, you know, he wrote a biography of Feynman and he's written a bunch of other books. So I highly recommend this. Now, this next book, this is a very thick book. I think it's about a thousand pages, but it's really fascinating. It's called The Code Breakers, written by David Kahn. And um, if you want to know everything about cryptography and spying and everything... This is a book that just covers it all, and of course, you know, it doesn't cover quantum cryptography or some of the newer developments, but if you want to get the history of the field, 
This is a great book. Now, the next book was actually published in the New Yorker magazine. It was serialized. I remember when I was a kid reading it. And it's a fascinating book by one of the great authors of all times, John McAfee. I mean, this guy wrote like hundreds of books on all different topics. But he wrote this book on the uh, curve of binding energy, and it's about nuclear weapons development and this nuclear theoretical physicist Theodore Taylor, and it's just fascinating reading. So I, I highly recommend this book. The next uh, classic book I have is um, The First Three Minutes by Steven Weinberg. You might think it's out of date and everything, but it's still good. It's still good because it only starts, you know, after... It only covers the first three minutes of the universe, but it starts after the grand unified theories and all the string theory, all that stuff. He's starting to figure out how um, nuclei combine and atoms are, fall, are formed and stars and everything. So everything in here, for the most part, is still um, correct and, and well worth reading. Weinberg is a great author and a great physicist. Um, the next book is by another great author, Richard Rhodes, who's written a lot of books on a lot of different subjects. This is a fascinating history of the making of the atomic bomb, and it covers both the science and the um, all around the world, how it was made and everything. So I highly recommend. This is the definitive history of nuclear weapons and the Manhattan Project, so I highly recommend this book. Um, this is an older book. It was published in... Um, 1980 by another prolific author, Tracy Kidder. But I remember reading it, I think, in 1980, and it concerned some kind of mini computer that was just designed and everything. You might think it's a little bit out of date, microcomputer they see here. I think it was mini computer. But it's really a great book on how engineering teams get together and work and all the things that they do. So I suspect it still holds in Silicon Valley a lot of these things, although obviously times have changed. Another classic book, this one um, I didn't enjoy that much, but so a lot of people enjoy it. It sold a zillion copies. It was called The Tower Physics, and it was an attempt to combine like quantum mechanics and Eastern mysticism. So at least uh, culturally you should read this book if you're a physics student just to see what others have, been, have read and why they like it or don't like it. Um, another great book... Uh, Freeman Dyson, who passed away a few years ago, he's a great writer. He's written many, many books. I'll have a few more by him. But I think one of his first books was Disturbing the Universe. And um, it's a lot about his life and Feynman and Oppenheimer and, and various other things. So it's well worth reading. Now, um, this next book... Um, Surely you're joking, Mr. Feynman. It actually came out in the first year I was at Caltech in the Ph.D. program in graduate school, 1984. And I was actually, you know, I talked to Feynman a few times, and I knew about Feynman, and I had read his Feynman lectures and everything. But I didn't really know all the stories about him. So when I first read this book, and, and Murray Galman really didn't like this book. He called it the joke book. It's incredibly funny in, in places, but... Anyway, this is a classic book that Feynman um, told to uh, Ralph Layton, and, you know, Layton did the writing, but Feynman did the talking. So, um, highly recommend, you know, there's many, many books by Feynman you should read, but this is one of the, the most entertaining. And then one of his classic books by Feynman is uh, when he gave lectures at Cornell, which are available online and you can watch. And it was published as a book, The Character of Physical Law. In case you don't want to read the whole Feynman lectures and everything and just want to have a good introduction to physics and symmetry principles and quantum mechanics and gravity, this is a short book. I think it's about 150 pages or something, 184 pages. They have a new forward for the new edition, but it's, uh, it's well worth reading. And it's well worth giving to your friends who don't know anything about physics. Okay, so um, then now I'm just getting into like less of the classic books and more just physics books that I recommend without any particular order. Um, so I'm going to start with um, one of the best physics books to learn something about physics. 
It's by Feynman. It's called QED, The Strange Theory of Light and Matter. And it's probably the best book for teaching about advanced physics, quantum electrodynamics, without, with hardly any math. And Feynman is a great teacher. And um, this book has been, you know, people love this book. So um, definitely, probably the premier popular science to learn physics type of book that's out there. Another book, this one's a little bit more difficult, but here you get like two for one. You get like uh, Feynman and Weinberg. I guess Dirac passed away in about somewhere, I think, 1984, and these were the Dirac Memorial Lectures, and half the book is a lecture by Feynman on spin, and half the book is a lecture by Weinberg on particles. It's a little more advanced. Um, you might have some equations in here and everything, and... Um, it's lectures, but it's two lectures, as you can see, one by antiparticles by Feynman and then the other by Weinberg on unification. Um, there aren't that many equations, but as you can see, there are some equations in there. And, and without an understanding of uh, quantum mechanics and um, elementary particles, it might be difficult. Okay, next book. A lot of people love this book. I hated it. Um, this is like a thousand page book by Penrose discussing just about every area of mathematics and theoretical physics. And it's he, people act like they can learn from this book. The only way you're going to understand this book, in my opinion, is if you're a theoretical physicist already. While it starts okay, not that bad, pretty soon he's talking about Riemann surfaces, hyperfunctions hyper-complex numbers, he's getting into symmetry groups, manifolds, and every fiber bundles, and everything. As a theoretical physicist, you need to understand all this stuff, but um, you can't learn it from this book. Anybody who says they can is, is really lying. If you want to see how involved theoretical physics is and how difficult it is, this is an okay book. But Penrose sort of missed the mark. He, he's such a genius that he thought this he could teach this to others very easily, but this is hard. Um, another book which I didn't really like that much, but is sort of like classic and well-known, is by um, Stephen Wolfram. He came out with a book called A New Kind of Science. Now, to me, to be honestly, this is just a book about cellular automa. It's a thousand-page book, but about 700 of the pages are pictures, um, literally pictures things like this. Um, let me see if I can get to it. Uh, I can't. They don't show it, but they're just computer output. It's an interesting book. The, the subject of cellular automa is itself interesting, but it doesn't, it's not a new kind of science. I think the tests of time have shown that this is a very limited application. Despite, you know, Stephen Wolfram really was a genius and he really, but he really, and he invented Mathematica, or at least he stole Mathematica, depending upon your opinion. But he, um, he really hypes everything that he does. He's done a lot, but he really hypes it to like more than it is. But anyway, this is a good, an easy read, take a look at. Um... The second creation, um, by the way, some of these books have been so long since I read that I don't really always remember exactly what they're about. I do remember this book. This is a good book on the description of um, the history of 20th century physics and you know all the brilliant physicists like Bohr, Planck, Einstein, and it's all geared toward um, mostly elementary particle physics. So, um, you know, it's it's a narrative of how elementary particle physics developed at least um, through the end of the uh, in the 20th century. So this is a good read. Um, if you're interested in QED and all the things that Feynman and Schwinger and Dyson and Tomega did, this book is a real detailed history of QED and the men who made it and it's written by a physicist him himself. And it's a very good read. So um, I recommend it if you have some understanding of um, quantum mechanics and quantum field theory. Um, this is a book I read a long time ago. P.C. Davies, he's a popular, he's a physicist. I think he's at the University of Arizona now. 
And he's got a lot of odd ideas, but he's written a lot of popular books. This was one of his first and his best. The other ones aren't that good, but if you want to understand the physics of time asymmetry, he has a, this is a great book, and I really enjoyed it when I read it the first time. Um, next book. Anthony Z has written a lot of books. Um, by the way, every book I put up here I've read and I own. So that's um, a miss. Um, someone has uh, purloined my copy of Godel, Escher, and Bach. But other than that, it, I can track all these books down. Fearful Symmetry is written by Anthony Z. He's written a lot of great textbooks in quantum field theory, group theory, and gravity. But he has also written a lot of popular books. Um, I think this is one of his best ones. It's about um, symmetry throughout physics and a lot on elementary particle physics and quantum field theory. So um, he's, he's a good writer. Um, next one. Okay, he's coming out with a new book. I just proofread it for him. Um, it's about 350 pages. It's quantum field theory as simply as possible. This is a book to try and learn it. There's a lot of equations in this book and everything, but he makes it as simple as possible. He's not asking you to be a, a physics student and everything. He reviews relativity. He reviews quantum mechanics. He reviews general relativity. And then he goes through um, the quantum field theory. And he starts simple and he uses analogies. And there's no detailed calculations in the book and everything, but there are a lot of like, this is what it's like. So if you want to understand quantum field theory or see what it's all about, this might be well worth your while. Okay. Uh, Jeremy Bernstein, he's a New Yorker writer, he's also a physicist, he, but he wrote for the New Yorker on a lot of physics. And all of his books are excellently written and everything. So this is um, Crank's Quark and the, Qua and the Cosmos, and it's all about various aspects of physics and everything that he came across or that he dealt with and people and everything. So I um, just want to see if I can get a... Uh, no, I can't see it inside. Um, so his books are always well worth reading. They're just entertaining reads. Okay. Um, Frank Wilczek is a Nobel Prize winning physicist. He's one of the top physicists even today, and um, he's written a bunch of popular books on physics. This one, he I think he wrote with his wife, Betsy Devine, who's one of his first things on longing for harmonies, and um, so he's always writing about, you know, this his research, you know, physics, astronomy, elementary particles, QCD, and, he, and I've, re I've read three of his books. This They're all good, you know, and he's got a newer one that's out right now, The Lightness of Being, you know, on Unification of Forces. And then he's got um, another book. This is probably a more popular book, Fantastic Realities. So, um, you know, he's, he's a good writer and he's an interesting person and um, he's a top physicist. So I recommend reading, you know, at least one of his books. And in the same way, like, I'm, I might disagree with a lot of what John Carroll writes, but he's a very good writer. He's an excellent blogger. He makes fantastic videos. He's got a whole video series on the best ideas in the universe. I highly recommend it. And I've read two of his books. One was on the Higgs boson, and the other one was, I think, From Eternity to Here. I think this was more on entropy and time and things like that. I think this is the better book. So, um... The Ultimate Theory of Time. So um, I recommend this book. But he's got like four or five others and everything. And um, if you like what John Carroll does, then it's well worth reading his it's one or two of his books. Um, next book. Okay, I left this out. This is another book by uh, Jeremy Bernstein. He writes about, you know, all these famous physicists, Einstein, Oppenheimer, Bell, and so on. So, um, and he added profiles of um, Weisskopf, Wheeler, and so on. So, um, it's well worth while reading Ber Jeremy Bernstein because he's such a good writer. You have to be a real good writer if you write for The New Yorker. Okay. Um, 
This is another book by Freeman Dyson, Infinite in All Directions. So he's got a bunch of books. Disturbing the Universe was one that I really liked, and I really like this one too. Um, this is a book just on like a biography of physicists in the uh, 20th century. Um, so it's a classic book, and um, I don't remember it too much, but you know, it's just. I think it's a biography of most of the physicists in the 20th century. Um, At Home in the Universe is a book written by Wheeler. Um, Wheeler's always a fascinating person, so I think he's, he talks in this book a lot about Bohr and Einstein and fission and nuclear physics and, and just all the top, topics that you would expect Wheeler to talk about. Okay. This is another book by Steven Weinberg that I would highly recommend, Dreams of a Final Theory. He's got many, many popular books and books on essays. He doesn't only write about science. He also writes about um, public policy and, and a lot, lots of stuff. So he's well worth reading on a lot of topics. Um, I decided to put a book by Thorne on black holes and time warps. Um, I haven't read that many popular books by Thorne, but I, I like this one, so this is um, well worth reading. Um, next book is by Suskind. He's also a book um, called The Black Hole Wars, where he talks about, you know, he, he, him and John Preskill, they made bets with Stephen Hawking's on the information paradox and everything. And he talks about everything in here, whether information disappears down a black hole, as Hawking thought, or whether um, somehow it leaks out. And the general consensus is that Suskind and Preskill were right, and Hawking is long, wrong. Hawking pl paid off the bet. And there are books that are updating this topic. It's a real um, big topic in physics. Um, this is a book by a well-known blogger that attacks string theory. It's called Not Even Wrong by Peter White and he maintains a blog of the same title. And it's a very interesting book if you want to read another perspective on how string theory has been high hyped and, and it hasn't really predicted anything that's worked out, you know. Either you believe that way or you believe the other way, but it's worthwhile reading this. Same thing, um, Smolin wrote The Trouble with Physics, you know, and the rise of string theory and the fall of science and everything. So these are entertaining books, and an another one on this genre. You know, one of the things that bothers me about this list of books I have is that they're all written by men, and I'm not um, sexist or anything. There are a few books that I've written read and bought by women but some of the ones by like Lisa Randall I didn't really like that much this one by Sabine about math and how it leads physics astray is probably worth reading but um, you know I, I wish I had more this is one book by a woman that I definitely recommend it's called The Cosmic Cocktail and Catherine Fries is one of the top astrophysicists out there and it's all about dark matter and energy and, and her career and everything. So this is well worthwhile reading. Um, going to another area, I have to include books by Penrose. I included his New Realities books. His other books, his earlier books on physics and consciousness and all kinds of things, whether you agree or not, they're still very, very uh, good reads. So he got I got The Emperor's New Mind here and... Um, Shadows of the Mind. These are like similar books by Roger Penrose. Um, he's written many popular books. Okay, this is a book that most people probably aren't um, aware of, but it's a great thing about... It's written by David Goodstein of Caltech, who did the Mechanical Universe cameos when that was public, uh, uh, aired on Nova in like the 1980s. And um, he writes about fraud and, you know, how it's easy to fool yourself. And all he has, like, a bunch of case studies on, you know, all these things with Millikan and uh, cold fusion and um, 
various other things, how top physicists uh, deluded themselves. Um, another book that I recommend, uh, The Los Alamos Primer, this is, um, this is not that popular. They have a lot of math in this book, but it's at the actual lecture books that were given to when you came to Los Alamos you were given this on what was known about nuclear fission and nuclear fusion and um, there's math in this but it's interesting math and it's not that difficult but if you want to learn a little bit about what they did at Los Alamos and how um, this book covers it I'm trying to get to the math part of this book but I, I can't get there um, Here's some math, I guess. Anyway, um, it's a short book, and it's historically interesting. And um, if you want to know a little bit about how nuclear weapons work, it's mostly fission. So all of this, it's not top secret anymore, let's put it that way. Um, I left out this book by Smolin earlier, Three Roads to Quantum Gravity. So um, that's probably it for the physics books right now. Next time I'll come in and I'll have a bunch of math books. And then I'll try and go to like computers and engineering and uh, public policy and nuclear weapons and biology. So um, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.